In this video, I'm gonna show you how to add Sentry to your Flutter app. Sentry can be used to track errors that happen while your app is in production. So if your users are experiencing issues, you can be alerted about them and fix them as soon as possible. Firstly, we will add the package to our Flutter app. So we can copy this Sentry Flutter 7.4.2 into our pubspec.yaml and then make sure to run Flutter pub get. Next, we're gonna go over into Sentry. If you don't already have an account, you can sign up for one and it is free and they have a pretty good free version. If your app is not crashing a lot, you basically can use the free version forever. Once you hit a certain number of app crashes per month or errors logged per month, then you will have to start paying. Uh, we're gonna go over to projects and create a new project and then choose Flutter. And then you can choose the alert frequency. I'm going to set it to every new alert and then we'll just name this Flutter Basics and create the project. Now you'll kind of get the instructions for adding it to your Flutter app. We already did the first part of adding the dependency. Next, we can initialize Sentry in our Flutter app. So go back to the app and find main. And we will need to make main an async function and then import that package. Now you'll notice this URL here is going to be different for you. So make sure you're using your actual URL so that you receive the alerts. Next, you can set this trace sample rate to whatever you like. I typically like to set this to uh, 0 0.1, which is pretty low. The trace sampling is kind of a different feature which lets you profile your app for speed and gives you a bunch of different metrics. But if you're really just interested in the errors that happen with users, then set this to a lower amount. This is something else to look into with pricing because if you set this to a higher rate, you will hit that uh, free version quicker. We also can comment out this run app down here because it is going to be taken care of within the initialization. Now we can write a sample bit of code that will actually fail so that we can see that it's logged in Sentry. So what we're going to write here is we're going to define a integer that can be null called test. And then we're going to try and add three to test, which is essentially adding null to three, which is going to fail. We should have a printed error, and then we also should have Sentry to catch that exception. So if we save this and rerun our app, you'll see we get catch error down here, which means Sentry also should have got the error. And you go to the issues. If you're noticing the error is not showing up in Sentry, try to completely close the app and rerun it which should actually help because we added that new package you do need to completely rerun the app and not just use the hot reload and now after completely rerunning the app you should see that we have that error there with the null check operator used on a null value which is exactly what we would expect because we had that test there and you can see there's a bit of a stack trace here which you can go through and read more information about where the error came from. It'll be kind of a similar information as to if you were printing out the errors in the console. But again, this will work for production. Um, the last thing is you probably don't want these errors to happen in development. So firstly, we can remove that, that test error there and then we can wrap our Sentry configuration in a if statement here to check if we are in release mode, which means we are in production. And while we're in development mode, we can just simply run our app without Sentry. Hope you found this video useful and it helps you keep the bugs out of your production apps. See you in the next one.